YouTube, my name is Mesa Sean, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Alright folks, strap in, this one might be a long one, because we have a ton of Destiny 2 Season of Dawn news to go over, and I mean tons of it. I literally have about 25 tabs open on my PC of stuff to go over with you guys, so let's just jump right into it. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button, it really does help me out. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and if you really want to help me out and join the Mesa Army, click that link in the description and become a channel member. Alright, let's do this. Let's kick it off with some new exotics. So for the Warlock, I was lucky enough to get myself the Prometheum Spur. Now check this out. Every time I get a Dawnblade Daybreak kill, well, look what it leaves behind, a big old rift. However, this is just not a normal rift. It's both an empowering and also a healing rift. So kind of interesting. I can't tell if it's a novelty just yet. I'm using it with the Top Tree Dawnblade, and you'll see some more footage of me using it as I show you some Sundial run later on in the video. So far, it's pretty fun, but I really want to see where its uses are. But it does look hysterical when you just start laying down on tons and tons of ads, and you're seeing rifts everywhere. I think it might be more helpful for your teammates, uh, not necessarily you, especially if you're using Top Tree Dawnblade, because uh, your Dawnblade will go so quickly. Next up, we have the Titan, and all of these exotic armor pieces, it's one per class, are random drops. So we have the Severance Enclosure, and this one's about your finisher. So defeating a Guardian with a melee attack or a combatant with a finisher unleashes a damaging explosion. I have not gotten these yet, but if you have it in the comment section, let me know. How big is that explosion, and is it good? Is it cool to use? I could imagine it being cool if there's tons of ads around an enemy, you do a finisher, and then they explode. We'll have to see. You guys let me know if you have it. Lastly, for the Hunter, we have some boots called the Bombardiers. Now, the main perk is called Parting Gift. Dodging leaves behind an explosion that detonates after a short delay, damaging enemies around it. Now, once again, if you guys have it in the comment section, let me know how they are. I'm imagining this could go pretty good with some of my previous builds I've done around the Hunter and also the Solar subclasses. Let me know in the comment section. Let's talk about some weapons you can get from the Sundial. So we have two obelisks, one on the Tangled Shore and one on Mars. Once you link one of those with the Sundial, each one will give you a choice of two weapons per Sundial run, meaning you get to choose one out of two weapons. So these are the weapons we have. We have three kinetics. We have an auto rifle, we have a scout rifle, and the sidearm. If you link the Tangled Shore over to the Sundial, you can get the auto rifle or the sidearm. Um, we have two energy weapons. We have a fusion rifle and a grenade launcher. And for your heavy, we've got a linear fusion rifle. So we only have two obelisks right now. And on the 17th, we're going to have Nessus and I believe the European Dead Zone. Let's move on to some exotic weapons. So we have an exotic fusion rifle, Bastion. We have the Symmetry exotic scout rifle. And then we have an exotic sidearm called Devil's Run. Bastion is going to be an exotic quest that we will get on January 28th. So the main perk and the secondary trait are going to be Saint's Fists. So charge to fire three spreads of kinetic slugs. And then we have Breakthrough. A portion of this weapon's damage bypasses elemental shields. Symmetry, the new exotic scout rifle that comes from the season rank ups and you get it on rank one if you have the premium track, is an exotic arc scout rifle. Now the main perk is Revolution. This weapon fires full auto. Hold reload to swap to Arc Seeker mode. Arc Seekers track towards enemies you target. Now we have Dynamic Charge. Precision hits build up a dynamic charge. Swapping to Arc Seeker mode increases damage and partially reloads the magazine based on the number of charges. If you get it up to about a charge of 7 or 8, you will 2-tap people in the Crucible. So simply just get a number of crits on multiple Guardians. Then you swap over by holding down Reload, switch to Arc Seeker mode, and once you're at 7 or 8, just shoot them twice and, yep, you got a 2-tap on your hands. Then on January 7th, we've got a quest line for the Devil's Run. This is going to be a solar exotic sidearm. Main perk is close the gap. Variable trigger, press and release to fire individual shots. Hold to charge up a high powered stagger, staggering laser. Strong against unstoppable champions. Then we have pyrogenesis. Fully charging the laser refills the magazine from reserves. Then we have some dawning items. Dawning will be here on the 17th and that's our holiday event. 
And I hope there's more items than this because all we have is a kinetic submachine gun. We've got a sparrow. We've got some shaders. We've got an emblem and also a ship. But hopefully there's going to be more stuff to grind for during the dawning. The cold front is an aggressive frame 750 round per minute kinetic submachine gun. So it's going to hit pretty hard. And I used to love those, except now I'm too used to the 900s. It does have a curated role that will have hammer forged rifling, Flared Magwell, Zen Moment, and Osmosis. Osmosis is when using your grenade ability will change this weapon's damage type to match your subclass until you stow it. Now, this can roll with better perks. I mean, you can get it with Accurized Rounds. Uh, it can come with Feeding Frenzy. It could come with Range Finder, but also one of the new perks. A Vorpal Weapon is the perk, and it says increased damage against bosses, vehicles, and guardians when their super is active. We've got some new perks that Bungie added to the game, and some some of them are from the exotic, so just bear with me. We have Breakthrough. A portion of this weapon's damage bypasses elemental shields. We have Clown Cartridge. Remember that one from Destiny 1? Yep, it's back. Reloading this weapon randomly overfills it from reserves. Then we have Dynamic Charge. That's from the Symmetry, where precision hits build up a dynamic charge. Swapping to Arc Seeker mode increases damage. It partially reloads the magazine. Uh, we also have Elemental Capacitor. So check this one out. Increase stats based on the currently equipped subclass. So if you have Solar, you get increased reload speed. If you have Arc, you get increased handling. And if you're running a Void subclass, you get increased stability. Moving on, we have Lead from Gold. Picking up heavy ammo also grants ammo to this weapon. Uh, we covered Osmosis already. Using your grenade ability changes this weapon's damage type to match your subclass until you stow it. So it's basically turning your kinetic weapon into an elemental weapon. Pretty cool. Then we have Pyrogenesis, which we talked about already. Fully charging, the laser refills the magazine from reserve. So a few perks that can roll on legendary weapons and then some of them that are from exotics. I would have liked to have seen more legendary perks. Moving on to ritual weapons, I don't see any that I actually have an interest in. Here's the Crucible one, the Komodo 4FR. So it comes with no distractions or moving target, or you can go with Eye of the Storm and Box Breathing. Now, I've gotten a number of other linear fusions with Box Breathing, so I'm like, do I really want this thing? Anyway, the actual quest, uh, you need to get 125 final blows, then 15 of those final blows need to be precision, and you need to reach rank heroic in glory. And I lied. I think I'm going to go for this one here, the Python from Gambit. This is like a Mindbender's Ambition, but maybe even a little bit better, and I don't have any good Mindbender's Ambition. So this one comes with either Overflow or Feeding Frenzy, or you can get Shield Disorient or One-Two Punch. Now, I'd be hard-pressed for myself to put down my Raid Shotgun that has Feeding Frenzy and One-Two Punch. I just love the thing, but look at the impact on this thing, and it does void damage. So, yeah, I think I probably will go for this thing. The quest line is a grind. You need 500 final blows with a shotgun in Gambit, 100 close range final blows, that's easy, uh, infamy rank heroic, and you could do this with either combatants or guardians, but guardians will grant you the most efficient progress. Also, if you didn't know, they did bring back a number of year one weapons like Hawthorne's Field Fort Shotgun, and even some of the Curse of Osiris weapons are showing up in the database as well, weapons that are now in year three. And then for the Vanguard ritual weapon, we've got the Buzzard. This is an adaptive frame kinetic sidearm, and I'm probably not going to go for this one. So for your choices and traits, you can go with Outlaw or Fourth Times a Charm where when you land precision hits, it will return two rounds to the magazine. In the final column, you can go with Swashbuckler, or you can go with Osmosis. So I would say not a bad roll for a sidearm if you're into sidearms. I myself, uh, I'm not really into sidearms. Now for the quest itself, it doesn't have a specific number for final blows, just a percentage. But it does say you need to get 50 airborne final blows, and then you need to get points in strikes, but it also just has a percentage. So this probably will be a grind, and will it be worth it? I don't know. If you're into sidearms, go for it. Now, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is an iron banner bow. This is an arc bow, and it's a precision frame. And it comes with some unique perks in it. You can either get it with that new perk called Vorpal Weapon, increased damage against bosses, vehicles, and guardians when their super is active. You can get it with Eye of the Storm. 
You've got Archer's Tempo, draw time decreases after every precision hit. Or you can go with no distractions. Aiming this weapon for a short period reduces flinch. It will have natural fletching and it will have elastic strength. Now, that was the only Iron Banner weapon we saw. Does that mean that the next Iron Banner will have more weapons? Please, Bungie, it's been so long since we've ever gotten any new Iron Banner weapons and we need them desperately. There's nothing or at least no reason for me to grind Iron Banner other than the Pinnacle Bounties. And even then, do I really need them for the 10 Power Pump? Not really. And I certainly don't want armor, although they did say over on Reddit that uh, Iron Banner Pinnacle stuff should drop with better stat rolls. Good old Lord of Wolves, well, has a catalyst now. And it is dropping, and let me know in the comment section if you've gotten it. So once you upgrade it to a masterwork, increases reload speed while release the wolves is active and also increases stability when it is not. So I'm going to be looking for you, Lord of Wolves Catalyst. The exotic heavy sword called Black Talon, well, you've got a catalyst now that's dropping. And when you upgrade it to a masterwork, the perk is this. Shots blocked immediately after guarding will increase the damage of Crow's Wing for a very short duration. If you go over on Twitter and follow JP Deathblade, he put up this tweet today and there's a link today in destiny.com slash eververse where he shows you the season of dawn items that are for silver only and also things that you can buy for bright does so if you're interested in seeing that check it out but of course things are always subject to change however bungie did tweet out current eververse items being offered for silver only this season are finishers clock cleaner fist of fury flash kick sure shot nail on the head and guard also, they put emotes, Gunslinger's Anticipation, Sunbreaker's Anticipation, Dawnblade's Anticipation, Night Stalker's Respire, Sentinel's Respite, and Voidwalker's Respite. And then for ornaments, a Violent Exorcism. So all of those will be silver only this season. That is going to do it for this video, guys. Leave me a hashtag made it to the end if you did make it to the end. If you'd like to win a set of Astro A50s, click the link in the description or annotate it on screen. The video I put up prior to this is going over all of the mods within the game the new seasonal artifact mods the new mods that go along with the seasonal armor for the sundial activity and so forth yeah in that video I am giving away a set of Astro A50s so that's it guys if you'd like to further support this channel and become a channel member and join the Mesa army click the link at the top of the description or click join on screen we've got an awesome Mesa army channel member discord and it's just simply an amazing community and man has it gotten big man there's so many of you guys in there and it's the greatest community I've ever been a part of. And as a bonus feature, and I will be adding a lot more perks in 2020 because a lot of new things are coming to YouTube streaming and we can't just talk about them just yet, but we've got a clan. So if you need a clan, we've got a Mesa Army clan for PS4, Xbox, and PC. Just one of the bonus perks. That's it, guys. Drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Twitter at MesaShawn. Check out my stream. Usually and always on YouTube. And that's it. I am out of here like Vladimir.